Hej och välkommen till det här seminarium om kvinnosituationen i Iran som är ordnad av Bahai Samfonden i Sverige. Samtalet kommer att vara på engelska, möjligen svenska, så vi får se hur det går. Jag heter Masoud Mafan, förläggare på Persiska här i Sverige, i Stockholm. Så tack för att ni är här. Jag har med mig eh, Nogol Ravi från eh, Bahai Samfonden. Har jag också direktör för masterprogram Mellanöstern, eh, Läsande Sori. Sen har jag Asia Amini här, poet, journalist och kvinnoaktivist som bor i Norge. Eh, Välkommen. Eh, vi börjar lite grann med situationen i Iran och eh, om eh, kvinnokampen i Iran och min första fråga till er. Okay. Eh, how do you see the women struggle i Iran? Please ask you. Yes. Uh, hello everyone. Thank you Masoud for uh, having me in this uh, important uh, discussion. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, talking about women's situation and equality, gender equality in Iran is very complicated because it's a long, long history uh, after in, in during 100, more than 100 years. Uh, but if I return to the situation um, now, uh, I can tell you that in one side, women rights struggling for their rights and not only for their rights but also for uh, democracy and for equality generally in Iran is uh, very high very serious uh, especially for the two decades in Iran women rights women movement in Iran was Uh, one of the most important movements, people movements, uh, toward democracy and uh, equality. Uh, but the other side, I have to mention that uh, the situation in law, the situation in some traditions and some uh, subcultures is not good because, uh, uh, for example, honor killing is serious Uh, topic in Iran or uh, violence against the women is serious in Iran. It means that in a parallel, we have a serious, a very uh, hard struggling through, uh, toward the equality and gender equality and democracy. And the other sides, we have many things to uh, fight for and fight with. The yeah, situation, situation between now and about 20 years ago is, uh, have been very, very better for the the camp uh, uh, women in Iran have. Is, uh, do, you, do, you, do you think it's, it's yeah. a difference? Mm, uh, I think it's a it's difference and it's hopeful because uh, 20 years ago <laughs> when I was in Iran and I was younger than now, Uh, we didn't have a gender discourse in Iran. Uh, gender issues was something that just women, women rights activists uh, fought and struggled for. That was something, for example, you know, that many activists had their ceremonies, had their, um, their uh, gatherings, uh, for example, for 18 March and for uh, Women's Day or for other issues. They have their sections, their issues. But after 22 decades struggling, one thing that I can tell you now is that uh, gender in general and women's rights in particular is a discourse in Iran. It means that uh, many people know about this, these topics. Many people, many political uh, sections, parties, groups, Uh, social groups, generally, especially media even, social media, they are discussing about women issues in Iran. It means that 
something happened, but not the, the, the result is not good because we have in the other side, we have a very uh, tyranny uh, government and state that don't allow any changes in law, in situa situation, and even in culture because they support uh, the 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 situation unequality situation uh, and they need it because there is a parallel the the the, the culture and the politics support each other f against equality because mm -hmm. when you don't have a democratic system in politics you cannot uh, allow people to have the discussion in culture. Okay, let's number two. Yes. Okay, now, if I may, I will use my notes. <laughs> so I wrote down a few notes because I thought this was important uh, and I didn't want to miss anything. Um, so if you allow me. Uh, and I just wanted to, to say a couple words uh, that I speak as a uh, director of the master's program at Lund University for Middle Eastern Studies, but also as a member of the Baha'i community. So the ideas I present sort of are inspired by both. But I'm very happy to participate in this panel that honors the uh, persecution of uh, Baha'i, 10 Baha'i women 40 years ago. And so uh, I wanted to answer a couple questions and I wanted to start with this question of why is it important to talk about Baha'i women in Iran? In other words, why should we care? It's the biggest minority, but it's still a minority. And I think here it is important to see Baha'i women's role and contribution to the gender equality movement overall. Uh, we often think of feminism as a Western idea. A lot of the times, feminist was criticized for that as well. We recall the suffragist movement. A lot of textbooks refer to 1840s as the first way of feminism. But imagine that already in 1848, one of the first believers of what would become the Baha'i community, Baha'i faith, a woman known by the name of Qurat al-Ain Tahere, widely known among historians, spoke to a gathering of early believers without any kind of veil. Uh, Edward Brown, a well-known Orientalist of Cambridge University, spoke of Tahere as a prodigy, nay, almost a miracle. By historians, she is widely discussed as the first Iranian woman to talk about equal rights between men and women, a concept unheard of at that time. Again, it was 1848. In 1852, Tahir was asked to recount her faith, and she declined, and she was choked to death at the age of 35. So you can see the history of, of that movement that started so so long ago, as you were saying, more than 100 years. In the case of Tahir, indeed, the women of Iran is an important reminder that feminism is not a Western movement, per se, that women in other parts of the world have strived to achieve equality in often much more restrictive and unsafe circumstances than in the West. To pay attention to these movements in other parts of the world is absolutely necessary to understand gender equality is not only a Western movement, but a global movement and to account for those diversities in the gender equality work. And I want to remember the words of Martin Luther the King Jr. who said, injustice anywhere is the threat to justice everywhere. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. I also want to say a few words of why is this so, what is so unique about the Baha'i women in Iran. Uh, as we know now, Iranian people are fighting for gender equality as we speak. Um, but here we're talking about Baha'i women, biggest minority Iran, who has, been, who has been doing this for more than 100 years. And these stories of these women make me wonder, what is it about them that made them appear so dangerous to the Iranian government, to the degree that they killed them? Many of them, not all of them. In the case of Baha'i women in Iran speaks volumes about the power of ideas and the power of women and the leadership that these women showed. It is not leadership that we think of 
you know, these crowds of people following somebody. It's the leadership that inspires for individual change that is so, seems so dangerous. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the women that was hanged in 1983 was Mona Mahmoud Dijar. She was only 16 years of age. One of her friends who was with her in the cell was telling her outwardly Mona was just a teenager to the degree that she didn't want to eat the food that was served in prison. She complained about it. Typical teenager. But inwardly, she was far beyond that. And in one of the conversations with her mother, she said that if she knew that all the youth in the world would gather and unite and uh, serve humanity selflessly, she would sacrifice 100,000 lives. So you can see that kind of a leadership that defines most of the theories in social science about human behavior that goes beyond, you know, you, if you think about Maslow's hierarchy of needs, that we need basic needs to be met in order to do something great. But they defy those theories. They did something, they prioritize their ideals and values above their physical needs. I also want to say that this case of Baha'i women in Iran is unique in showing how both genders, male and female, playing their unique roles in the work of equality. The fact that these women appeared so influential is a symbol of equality in itself, that they played just as an important role in the development of a community as their brothers and fathers. In fact, these 10 women were executed two days after six Baha'i men were ex executed. Many of them were, were relatives, actually. So as you see, even their execution was symbolic of that equality. Mm. Now, the last question that I want to address is, what can you do with all this information? Uh, and when I li listened to one of the talks of the women that was in prison at the time, she, they asked the interrogators, why, why, why do you not kill all the Baha'is at once? Why do you have to do it step by step? And one of the interrogators said, well, if we kill you all at the same time, the international community is going to talk about it and we don't want that we don't want the resonance and then they said um and that i think was this important that uh, that we know about it even though these women were killed at night somewhere quietly so that nobody knows but after 40 years we know about and these examples are inspiration i think this is the first step in that um and i think if we commit ourselves to this work of gender equality with a vision of working together drawing from these experiences of women in different parts of the world, working together, unitedly, men and women alike, in the West and in the East, this will, be, this will speak to those sacrifices. I would like to finish with a poem from Mahvash Sabet. I think her poems were read uh, in this uh, book fair already. Um, and he, she's currently in prison serving her second year sentence. And in this poem, she addresses her friend who was also imprisoned with her and currently also serving a 10-year sentence again for her beliefs. Mm. Um, so this poem, she says to Fari, Fariba Kamalabadi, Oh, my companion in the cage, how many cruelties we saw together, how many favors too, and blessings in our isolation. They mm. tied your wings to mine, feather to feather, and you rested your head beside mine every night. A hundred stories have been have bruised our breasts and lips, but they are sealed. All the forced charges were, were hurled against us shall melt away. Mm. Oh, my companion in the cage, may your cup fill with faith and your breast brim with remembrance of his loved ones. May your land flourish, your heart leap in ecstasy forever, and your memory rebound with the jubilation of the people of Iran. And I want us to think about these women not as victims, but as powerful women that showed the way and that were willing to do this in order that the women everywhere work together with men for the equality uh, that is necessary for the advancement of all humankind. Yeah, thank you. Working, uh, working together is a good plan. Uh, no goal. Uh, what do you think about the uh, women's situation in Iran? Are you same uh, as uh, hopefully um, about the uh, women in Iran? Yes, uh, thank you for, for the invitation to contribute. Uh, my name is Nogol Rahbin. Um, 
uh, I'm a, a member of the um, Swedish Baha'i Community Office of Public Affairs. And thank you to the distinguished participants uh, of this panel for this um, conversation. I'm very happy and honored to be part of this important and highly relevant um, conversation today on gender equality in Iran. Also connected to the one year long campaign our story is one, which was recently launched by the Baha'i international community. So just to explain briefly, for those of you who might not know about the Baha'i faith, it's a world embracing world religion actually founded in Persia 180 years ago, making it the most recent of the world religions. So Baha'is come from virtually every nation, ethnic group, and culture. And actually, there are more than 2,000 ethnic and tribal groups represented in the worldwide Baha'i community. And in Sweden, there are about 1,000 members, ranging up to Kiruna, down to Malmö. And Baha'i strive to work for the betterment of the world based on principles such as the oneness of humankind, equality between women and men, elimination of prejudice and harmony between science and religion. So I think my fellow panelists have uh, brilliantly shared uh, many aspects on gender equality in Iran. Uh, and not the least based on the recent developments in Iran just this past year, the topic has indeed gained new momentum also in international media where the world, with horror and admiration, has watched the blood, tears, and wounds of thousands of Iranian women fighting for equality. So this Our Story is One campaign was launched on the 40th anniversary of the execution of 10 young Baha'i women in Shiraz, on 18 June 1983. Um, after months of torture and imprisonment, they were mass executed by the Iranian authorities without the knowledge of their families. And as we heard, the youngest of them, Mona Mahmoudinejad, was only 17 years old at the time of execution. And most of the women were in their 20s. They were hanged one by one each one was forced to watch the next woman's death in a harrowing attempt to make them renounce their faith. None did. And their only crime was their belief in a faith that promotes gender equality and justice, to name a few. So four decades ago, the Iranian government thought that they were erasing the names of these 10 women from history. Little did they know that the ruthless act would instead ignite a movement of unity. Mm. Decades later, our story is one, is resonating with the deepest aspirations of populations around the world to turn to unity rather than division and to see the interconnectedness of our stories. And this sends a very strong message to the Iranian government mm. that injustice and shedding innocent blood ultimately will not succeed. Mm. So oppression and persecution present in any society can be likened unto a virus that spreads. It, it affects everyone and it has to be dealt with at an early stage to increase the chances of a successful outcome. The years and decades that followed the Islamic revolution in Iran, the virus of oppression unfortunately replicated. And efforts, and it has now come to affect everyone in Iran. Despite the Iranian government's effort to sow discord and hate between groups, our story is really a shared one. Today in Iran, 
we can indeed see the legacy of these 10 young Baha'i women in Shiraz. And we see the same spirit, we see the same choice being made to stand up for the principles of justice and equality at any cost, even one's life. Though mistreated and imprisoned, today's women, just like those before them, are bravely and joyously sacrificing their all to live in a more prosperous Iran. So it doesn't matter if we are Muslim, Kurd, Baha'i, man or woman, we have to stand united against any kind of oppression and persecution for a future Iran built on respect for human rights, tolerance, and democracy for all. Mm -hmm. Our story is one and will remain so in this regard until we reach that goal. Thank you. Uh, thank thank you. you. We have just five minutes. Uh, Nogol uh, talk about 10 women excluded in Iran. Uh, outside of Iran, international arena not happened. Is silent. What do you think, Asiye, about uh, in Iran? Uh, why people in Iran, intellectuals, have been uh, was passive about this? Uh, that's a very uh, important uh, question. I think uh, we can discuss in one hour, maybe. But in four minutes, I have to shortly tell that uh, something happened after the, the revolution and. Uh, making enemy against the the the, the, the Islamic uh, government, uh, who uh, make the the government and the states after the revolution was very uh, serious thing, political thing for a religious state. Everybody else who has another religion uh, is an enemy, even they don't think uh, they yourself. They, they, they maybe uh, not maybe surely they uh, introduced themselves as an Iranian, but the, for the government they were enemy. Making enemy gave them the possibility to um, press them and execute them, arrest them and uh, torture them long time. And uh, making enemy uh, as well as. Uh, gave them the opportunity to uh, silence the, the, the others, the people. And I, I think some things like human rights was not the issue, unfortunately, that time. Everything was just politics and politi political situation uh, has divided them for enemy and uh, the, the supporters. Mm -hmm. Something that I can just comparing with with uh, Baha'i situation in that time and women's situation that lost their rights that in that time was this difference uh, mm -hmm. differences that Baha'i were enemies but women were not enemy they just push and lost their their uh, rights yeah. but they had some similarities the similarities was were that. Nobody uh, mentioned about their rights. Nobody wanted to help them. Nobody wanted to support them. They felt very much alone. And that uh, I, I am, uh, I was um, uh, very, uh, I was child when uh, these, these things really happened to Iran. But after I became a human rights activist in Iran, I was shocked at how people can be silent during the years when they knew about this situation. But I think that everything was very political and that pushed them to be a side that everybody could forget about this. Mm -hmm. And I just, Master John, I just wanted to, because you mentioned to Mahvash uh, Sabet, uh, my dear friend Mahvash in prison and I just wanted to tell that Mahvash not only sent a letter to you in this uh, book fair but also she said that the, don't, don't forgetting about us in prison is the most important thing for us because we are here and we think that 
do people think about us? Do they know about us? And I think this is the difference between that time and today that we yes. are here and talk about them. Thank you very much, Asi Amini, Leisan, and Nogol. Thank for you.